Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. A few months ago, I made a detailed tutorial on how to create switchable parent for any kind of item. But what about two-handed items like double swords, spears, staff, rifles, etc. Let's check it out. This is a method I used on most of my rigs and you can see it in action on this Kibali intro animation or during this shooting scene from my teaser for the Art of Effective Rigging course. By the way, I cover how to create this kind of shooting sequence in this tutorial. Basically, when a character is using a two-handed item, it's easier to animate the item and make the hand follow than to animate the hands and hope that the item will follow. And we're going to create a mechanism that allows that. You've probably seen a lot of tutorial using the child of construct to create this kind of mechanism. But these are not robust solutions because there are one way around and you will face circular dependency at some point. Because what I want to do is to be able to parent the object to one hand or the other or to parent in a way both hands to the object. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the mannequin rig that you can get for free on p2designacademy.com and I also modeled a quick double-handed axe. When opening the rig file, you should be able to see all the collection and custom properties. If it's not the case, run the script through the text editor. You can then import any model you have as a prop. And then I will select the armature, switch to pose mode, select all controllers and press Alt-R, Alt-S and Alt-G to reset all the controllers transform. In the rig UI, we can disable all the collections, but the IK controllers. These are the controllers we're going to drive using the prop. In the rig properties, enable inverse kinematics for both arms. These inverse kinematics controllers already have switchable parents. To see that, we need to open the bones collection and enable the layer number 3 with the MCH bones. Under the hand controller, we will find an MCH parent hand controller featuring an armature constraint with multiple target bones, all of them with a driver. This is the simplest and probably most effective way to create switchable parent. We will do the same on the axe in a few seconds. Basically, the hand controller is parented to that MCH bone. And through a driver, we can enable the influence of those bones on the MCH parent. So we're going to need those MCH bones at some point. So let's create a new bone collection. This is going to be a temporary collection for us to work in. I will select both MCH parent, the one from the left and right hand. Press M to move them into that temporary collection. We can now go to Bone Collection and disable the visibility of the MCH collection. Let's build our mechanism for the axe. First, I will reset the position of the axe. I will select my armature again, press Tab to enter edit mode, make sure that my temporary collection is selected and press Shift A to add a new bone. I can scale it down a little bit, make sure you're using individual origins. And I will press F2 to rename it and call it axe. I can press Ctrl Tab to switch back to object mode, select both the axe and then the armature, press Ctrl Tab to enter pose mode, select the axe bone, press Ctrl P and choose bone. So basically now the axe object is parented directly to the bone. It's not a mesh deform, but that's enough for what we're doing. I will display the bone names in the viewport display of the armature properties. And I will duplicate the axe bone and scale it down to create our MCH axe. This is going to be the parent of the axe bone and the owner of the armature constraint. As explained in the previous video, whenever you're using the armature constraint, you need to make sure that the owner of the constraint is not parented to anything. So make sure the MCH axe bone has no parent. Then parent the axe bone to the MCH axe bone. And now on the MCH bone, we can add an armature constraint. And as target bone, we will first add the root. 
Let's add the chest bone if we want to stick the axe in the back of the character. And then I will use the hand left and hand right. Now I don't want to use a specific controller because I want to be able to handle the axe with the FK or IK controller. So I will use the deformation bone of the hand as a parent because the deformation bone is driven by both the IK and the FK. Now we just need to create a driver that allows us to only enable one of the bones at the time and the axe will follow that bone. In that case, the chest here, but if I switch to one of the hands and I move the hand, you can see the axe is following. If you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. Learn actual professional techniques or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. Let's create a custom property that we will use as a driver. I generally use a single bone called properties on all my rig where I store all custom properties. So let's select it and in pose mode, go to the bones properties and under custom property, create a new custom property that we will call axe parent. I want this custom property to use integers and each value will correspond to a different parent. So we can go from zero for the root to three for the end right. We can type in a description if we want. So I will just list the different parent, zero the root, one the chest, etc. And finally, we want to make sure that this custom property is overridable so that we can animate it when we link the character in another scene. Let's now create the driver. On the custom property value, I will right click and choose copy as new driver. And then I will go on the MCH axe bone. I access its bone constraints, right click on the influence of the first bone and paste the driver. Now I need to right click on the driver and edit it. We will use a scripted expression. Blender automatically created a variable called axe parent that returns the value of our custom property. So in the expression, we can ask Blender if the axe parent value is equal to zero. This is what we call a Boolean. If the value of axe parent is equal to zero, then Blender will say yes and return a value of one. So let's right click again on the driver and copy the driver and we can paste the driver on all the other influence and then edit it. And for the second driver, we want to know if the variable is equal to one, on the next equal to two, and on the last equal to three. This way, when we change the custom property value from zero to three, it will trigger the influence of one of those four target bones. If the value of the custom property is zero, the influence of the root bone will be one, if the custom property value is one, then the chest bone influence will be one and all the others zero, etc. We now have our switchable parent for the X. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a nice comment and a like. So here come the main problem or the main solution to our rig. Since the X controller can be moved by the hand left or hand right, we can't use this X controller to move hand left or hand right. That will create a circular dependency. So the trick is to create another controller that will allow us to control both the hands and the axe. And we have two solutions then to trigger the mechanism. So first, let's select the axe bone, duplicate it and scale it up. I will then press F2 and call it axe master. We can parent this bone to the root bone and now let's create a new custom property where we will enable or disable this master controller. I select the properties bone. I will create a new custom property that I will call axe master. And since I want to enable or disable it instead of using an integer, I will use a Boolean and I will make sure that I make it library overridable. Now what I want is that whenever I move the master controller, the hands move and so does the axe. So let's add a new target bone in the armature constraint. And we will do that for the three armature constraint, adding a new target bone targeting the axe master controller. 
When we now move the master controller, all the controllers are moving, but they are not perfectly following it, because they are sharing their influence with another bone. So the trick with this method is to say, if I'm using the axe master controller, I want to make sure that all the other influences are set to zero. This will make sure that all controllers follows 100% the master controller, and this will prevent any potential cyclic dependency. Don't worry, this is pretty easy to do. First, we need to right click on our custom property and copy its data path. This will allow us to find this custom property in the driver editor. Let's go on our constraint and edit the first driver. We have an existing variable pointing at the x parent value. We need to create another variable that will point at our x master value. I will call the variable x master. This property is stored in the mannequin, so I will source it. And now I just need to paste, pressing Ctrl V, our data path. So now I'm exposing two variables. So I can ask Blender, does the x parent equal to zero and does x master equal to zero? And if it's not the case, Blender will return a zero. Blender will return a one, setting the influence to one, only if both axe parent and axe master have a value of zero. If I select the property bone, we can see that the value of axe master is one, so it can't work. If I disable it, now our root influence is one. So with this driver set up, I can right click on it, copy the driver and paste the driver on all the other drivers. This way I can replace them. Then I just need to edit each driver and make sure that the value of the X parent correspond to 0, 1, 2 or 3 and X master is equal to 0. For the very last driver, we can get rid of the first variable and simply ask Blender if axe master is equal to 1. And we're done. Whenever axe master is equal to 1, it will trigger the axe master influence and it will remove the influence of all the other bones. If axe master is disabled, then Blender will use the value of axe parent to know which bone has an influence of 1. Now I just need to do exactly the same thing on the hands. I will select the MCH parent bone and on the first driver I will create a new variable and I will make sure that the first variable is still equal to zero and our master X variable is also equal to zero. And I will update each driver that way. If you're following along with the mannequin rig, you can slow down this part of the tutorial so that you can see what I'm doing. So here I am with my rig finished. I can control the axe with the right hand or the left hand, or I can enable master and control the axe and both hands using only the master axe controller. If you want to know how I keep my controllers in place when switching, check out this video. If you want to know how I created those custom shapes for those controllers, check out this video. And if you want to learn how to expose those custom properties in the rig UI and learn other methods to create the same kind of mechanism, check out my rigging course The Art of Effective Rigging in Blender. This is the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.